Chapter 2, Section 2.6, we're going to describe error in measurement. We're going to make accurate measurements, distinguish precision and accuracy, and explain significant figures. So if we were to compare the following three rulers to one another, you'll notice that as we move downward to ruler C, we have more tick marks or increments provided on the ruler, which is going to allow for a more accurate measurement. So you'll notice that we can't make a measurement on this ruler since there are no lines or increments provided for us. On this ruler, we may estimate that it's 61 millimeters. And so the 60 we can be sure of. So this value is what we are certain of. And the one is the one estimated value. or the uncertain value in this number. And so 61 is the maximum number of significant figures that I could acquire from this particular ruler, letter B. If I look at letter C, however, and we'll get a closer look, in letter C, you'll notice that we have 60, and it's not quite at 61. So we would maybe call this 60.8 or 60.9. And so if I go ahead and write this as 60.9 millimeters, now what we have for certain is 60, and then 9 is our estimated value. So three significant figures is the maximum for this third ruler. So read the following measurement to the correct significant figures. So if we get a closer look here, we know for sure that it's 3. And if we read forward, we have 3.1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 3.6 is what we can be certain of. And now we need to estimate one more value between the lines. And so this would be 3.63, roughly. So this ruler is accurate to a minimum of two decimal places. Remember, you can only have one estimated value as your uncertain value in the number. We can't estimate anything past the 3 because we don't have any lines or markings to tell us even for certain about the 3. That was our estimated value. So significant figures are all numbers that are certain plus the one estimated value or uncertain value. That last number can vary depending on each trial that it's read or the reader. So letter A, and we know for certain that this is 4.1234567844.8. 4 it's not quite 4.9, so we might call this 4.88 or 4.89 would also be acceptable. Letter B, this one is not quite on the 2.2, so we call this 2.1 and maybe 2.19. Notice that each of these rulers are being read to a minimum of two decimal places because that's how accurate a ruler can be. Okay, letter C. Notice in letter C that the arrow appears to point at the 4, exactly on 4. You might call this 3.99, but if it is exactly on the 4, then you simply need to express this value with the minimum of two decimal places. So it wouldn't be just 4, it's 4.00 centimeters. Finally, letter D. Notice that it doesn't quite make it to the 1. So we're going to call this 0 0.123456, 0 0.7, and maybe this would be 0 0.72. So all of these measurements at a minimum had two decimal places because that's how far we could know for certain and estimate with these rulers in particular. Other measuring tools can have a varying amount of increments, therefore a different amount of significant figures. So for example, when reading this graduated cylinder, notice that it goes from 50 up to 60. So each of these increments is a is one milliliter. 
If we count upward, we'd have 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, etc. So let's look at a close-up of this. If we are reading the bottom of the meniscus, which is going to be this area right here at the bottom of the dip, then we would read this to be 50, 51, 52. It's not quite 53, so it'd be 52.8. You'll notice that this graduated cylinder is accurate up to one decimal place. And so anytime a measurement is read with a 100 milliliter graduated cylinder, it has to be read to at least one decimal place. Our second example goes from 6 to 8 with a middle point that must be 7. And so when we read the increments here, they go up by 0.2. So this must be 6, 6.2, 6.4, 6.6, 6.8, .6, and then 7.0, and then 7.2, etc. So if we're reading the bottom of the meniscus here, we have 6, 6.2, 6.4, 6.6, and then we have to kind of estimate, so maybe 6.62 or 6.61. And so you'll notice that this graduated cylinder happens to have an accuracy of up to two decimal places. So when given values or when values are read in a lab, for example, if I told you that 0 0.0345 is the accurate correct value, then would you say that these four numbers are read accurately? Answer would probably be no because of this final answer right here, 0 0.0205, is uh, very inaccurate by comparison. If you look at the other three, they do have all the correct certain numbers, 0 0.034, but the uncertain digit or the estimated digit, 0, 8, and 6, are a little bit far off from the five. So somewhat precise, these three values, but not very. Now, the other question is, are these four values precise? If you look at all four of them to each other, you would say that they are not precise. Precision can also be called consistent, and so a person is precise if they are measuring consi consistently the same way each time, getting similar values each time.